Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, North Carolina. It's the Appalachian State Mountaineers playing host to the Georgia State Panthers in the first of two meetings tonight and tomorrow. And with that, we welcome you inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. I'm Kendall Lewis, joined by John Reister with you on ESPN Plus tonight. And, John, a pivotal weekend in Sunbelt play, especially for these two teams battling for that sole possession of first place. Well, you're, you're in first place because you've played more games, and this is going to be a good one, Kendall. You've got a great defensive team with Appalachian State, number one in the conference, playing against a team that's arguably the best scoring team in the conference, definitely in the east with Georgia State. They're going to push the tempo. They don't want to get in a half-court game with Appalachian State. Appalachian is just too good in the half-court. Georgia State's got to defend without Fallon. Last game against South Alabama, Mountaineers set a, a game record making 21 out of 22 of their free throws. So they've got to be very careful on the defensive end, Georgia State. App's got to slow them down. Everybody on Georgia State's roster can take the ball off the glass and take it down the floor. So transition defense is huge for the Mountaineers tonight. It's the Mountaineers that control the opening tip. This is Deshaun Parker. Kicks it over. Open look for Delph. And can't connect on the first possession of the ball game. Georgia State, a team that loves to get up and down the floor. And this team has a great mixture, John, of shooters and slashers. Corey Allen, 54% from three. Guy can really fill it up. Number 11 in blue for the Panthers. Kendall, they've got weapons everywhere. They've got two posts that can score. They've got a, just a ton of guards that can shoot the three. Great defense by the Mountaineers there. Completely took them out of their offensive set. Speaking of their offense, I tell you, Georgia State's very unique, in fact, that they, they will do the high ball screen like everybody else does outside the three-point line. But if you keep your eyes off of the ball, you'll see that they're doing a lot of movement and screening off of the ball also to get shooters open. Little token pressure from the Panthers. This team predominantly man-to-man -man on T. Parker had it knocked away as James Lewis Jr. picks it back up. No score over a minute into the first half here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Justin Roberts into the paint, another turnover. And up ahead, Parker outrunning everybody. And missed the layup. Rebound comes off to Thomas, and back come the Panthers. Mitch and this Georgia State team, they want to turn it into a track meet. Nice dish. And on the doorstep was Thomas. He couldn't finish, but three chances and the follow from Colin Moore, the freshman. It looks like James Lewis, something might have happened under the basket. He's a little bit hobbled. But what you're seeing now is this, this is the tempo that Georgia State wants to play. They want to get up and down. They're the 17th fastest team with, as far as taking shots against the shot clock in the nation. So they want to push. They want to get after you. And uh, they're a pretty good defensive team, too. Forrest absorbing contact. That's going to go against Corey Allen. That's his first. So just two minutes in, Corey Allen picks up his first. That's the team's leading scorer, top three-point shooter. And Justin Forrest at the free throw line, a spot where he manufactured a ton of points last year at the free throw line, was a 20-point scorer in Sunbelt Conference play a season ago. First team all Sunbelt selection as he rattles in the first. He's really stepped up his game since the conference started. Got off to a little bit of a slow start in the non-conference games, but uh, he's, he's a senior. He's stepping it up, and um, he's really taking on the, a huge leadership role, him and Adrian Delph, with this team going into conference play. Shoots 86% from the free throw line, goes one of two that time. And Justin Roberts controls the rock. He leads the team in the assists with 48. A really good passer can see the floor, and Allen space. Missed everything from three, and there's a foul on the floor. And I believe they're going to get Donovan Gregory. That's going to be the Mountaineers first. And the Panthers with a 2-1 lead to start here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And back out front, Colin Moore surveys, trying to drop it off. This one through the hands of Yosemi. 
And a dunk Big on the other end. Wow. That time for Adrian Delph. Big time finish by Adrian Delph with the left hand. Bringing the hammer down. And I tell you, Georgia State's really having a hard time with the Mountaineers half court defense. Roberts a good feed inside. And so Sime able to finish as Georgia State goes back up on top. And I tell you, the Mountaineers have seen a lot of token pressure this year. Georgia State's a different animal. They're going to put pressure on you the entire 40 minutes, both in the half and the full court. It may look like that they're not putting a lot of pressure because they're not trapping, but they're making you work every time you bring the ball up the floor. Allen, a transition three. Empty on his first two attempts from three-point land. And a shuffle of the feet from Adrian Delph as he'll turn it back over to the Panthers. Well, I can tell you what, Kendall, Corey Allen's not going to be deterred just because he missed his first two shots. This guy is a scoring machine, and he scores at all three levels. And he really works hard to get his shot. And as a defender, if you just hesitate for a second coming off of a screen, he's going to catch and shoot. He's definitely looking to shoot the basketball every time he catches it. This Georgia State Panthers team, they love to shoot the corner three. Evan Johnson, the freshman from Durham, North Carolina, is in the game. He's been a guy that's provided some spark for the Panthers this year. And he was shooting with deep range and warm-ups today, Kendall, so they've got to keep an eye on him. Good find inside, so Sime finishes again. Four early points for Elio Sosame. Sosame's averaging a double-double, and uh, he's another one of those high major transfers that came in this year from Cincinnati. Very physical player, very active, left-handed. Almost always finishes with his left hand. 6-3 start for Georgia State. Did you take a second look? Both these teams trying to settle in, just kind of feeling one another out right now. Four minutes in, media timeout approaching. Rising for the J and connecting is Evan Johnson. And this team has some talented freshmen. Johnson is one of those guys, as we mentioned, that can provide a spark off the bench. And how does this pressure affect the Mountaineers' rhythm in the half court, John? Well, it bothers them, obviously, because it, it takes a little bit more time off the shot clock. As you can see, they're about 30 feet away from the basket trying to initiate their offense. They're not used to seeing, like I said before, this kind of pressure. Bank is open here at Boone. After hours is Almanasi is able to drill it from three. And another thing about the pressure, Kendall, is Georgia State's going to play 10, 11 players. They've got nine players averaging over 20 minutes a game uh, playing time. So, you know, this is going to wear the Mountaineers down a little bit. They go seven, possibly eight deep. I like the fact that Dustin Kearns is playing some other guys right away. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely playing into Georgia State's hands, the tempo of this game right now. And a push off from Almanasi. That's an offensive foul. Media timeout here inside of the Home Scavocation Center. It's 10 6, Panthers. We'll be right back. You're watching Sunbelt Basketball on ESPN. Yeah, even this, even this token pressure is giving them a little, you know, you know, a little bit of a problem. I can't imagine. I guarantee you that Lanier is going to come out, and he's going to probably run and jump or trap here in a second. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do Lanier first, Kyle. Lanier. He's from the Rick Barnes tree. Funny, you got two Rick Barn guys here. Yeah. You got two guys that have. Uh... Was Dustin ever with Barnes or was he just with Shyatt? Oh, you, uh, he's with, that's right, he's with Shyatt. He's, uh... And Shyatt was Barnes' top guy. He took and over when Barnes Shyatt left. Was, yeah. That's right, no connection there. Well, there's a connection. It's just a Somewhat little bit of a farther connection. down it's the tree, just, yeah. Yeah.
Rob Lanier in his second season as the head coach of the Georgia State Panthers and 19 wins in year number one, taking over after Ron Hunter took the head coaching job at Tulane. This Georgia State program, rich history. They've been at the top of the Sunbelt Conference for the last five, six years. This has been the cream of the crop, and Rob Lanier keeping the Panthers in that position. He was the former head coach at Siena as well, brought – Five seasons of head coaching experience to the Atlanta area. And he's got a really good coaching staff as well with Chris Kreider and Cliff Warren, Jarvis Hayes. This Georgia State team, they're going to be at the top of the conference for many years to come as well. Well, the one thing that he's got is he's got a great eye for talent. He was Rick Barnes' lead recruiter while he was at Texas and at Tennessee, actually associate head coach uh, under Rick Barnes. And I tell you, he uh, – he recruited uh, 11 guys that ended up getting drafted into the NBA. So he definitely has got an eye for talent, and I'm sure he's just going to keep bringing it here to Georgia State. This one out of bounds as Parker reached in to rip it away but stepped on the baseline. So it's going to stay on this end with the Panthers. John, you mentioned it, this Georgia State team, they run 10, 11 guys deep, night in and night out. And Dustin Kearns of Appalachian State, his squad, they can kind of match that. They're very deep as well. Well, they've got young talent. They've got some guys that are, that are still learning how to play at this level, and the game's starting to slow down for them a little bit. As you can see, you've got uh, Sasha Gluskov in there. This is the first real minutes he's played in conference, and um, this is good to see him out there get some experience at 6'11". Uh, he's got to learn to play against these bigger guys, these more athletic players. And Gregory racing out in transition to jam that one home. Here's the kick out, open look. That time it was Kane Williams who had an open three and an offensive rebound by the Panthers. Slicing to the bucket, good D by the Mountaineers, able to alter the shot. Here comes Delph, authority down the lane. Gluskoff was trying to follow it back up, but there was a foul before. And a couple of free throws coming for the Mountaineers. And what you're seeing on the Georgia State offensive end is, is they're doing the high pick and roll, but at the same time, they're screening off of the ball, and that's leaving these uh, three-point shooters wide open. It's a semi-skip pass from one side of the floor to the other, uh, and um, they just had the wrong guys in the wrong spots that time. Kane Williams is not really a great three-point shooter, actually low 20%. Normally, you're going to have Corey Allen uh, standing out there and Justin Roberts both well into the high uh, 40 percents and in fact with Corey Allen 54 percent from three so they're getting the shots they want they're just not falling right now Delph makes them both and we're tied at 10 all of a sudden that's a mini 4-0 run for the Mountaineers since the media timeout and Georgia State's missed their last four shots that's a rarity from this club they have plenty of shooters across the board but what a defensive play by Donovan Gregory just hanging in the air with JoJo Toppin, JoJo Toppin, one of the most athletic players in the Sun Belt, just transferred in this year from the University of Georgia. Delph surveys, 12 on the shot clock. Had it poked loose, and the Panthers come away with it. It's Kane Williams attacking downhill and drawing the contact. And I tell you, that's, what, that's Kane Williams' game right there. He is going to go and go until somebody stops him. And he takes some, I've watched five games leading into this game on Georgia State, Kendall, and he takes some wild, crazy shots. But the one thing he does do, he gets to the free throw line. He does an excellent job of drawing contact and finishing. 17th on Georgia State's all-time scoring list. He's got now 1,082 career points as you take a second look. As you see, he's out of control but he finds a way to run into Sasha Gluskov and get to the free throw line. James Lewis Jr. checks back in from the Mountaineers. And Kane Williams goes two for two that trip at the charity stripe. These two teams struggling from the field thus far. Georgia State just five of 13. Appalachian State just three of nine. Well, both teams, Kendall, have really ramped it up on the defensive end. It's, it's not a case of bad basketball. This is offense. This is a case of really, really good defense. Michael Almonese with the basketball now. Yeah. 
Forrest with 11 on the shot clock. And that's a good matchup right there, Justin Forrest and Colin Moore. Colin Moore, 6'5", strong freshman defender for nice Georgia pass State. Nice passes. Lewis lost it going up. Picked back up by Gregory. I don't know if he got it off or not. Are they going to score the basket? And they're going to take a second look at this one. Just with the naked eye, John, I don't know that he got it off. It was close. It was close. It might have been off his fingertips. We're sitting right here beside the baskets. So we had a pretty good look at it. It's going to be close, but I think he got it off. Let's take a second look. And looks. It's, it's hard to it tell. Looks like it's, it's in his hands right there with zero. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very close and, and excellent hustle from Donovan Gregory. Good job by our production crew. Showing you these replays and these angles. Our camera crew as well doing an excellent job down on the floor and in this arena. Should be a good one tonight. 12-10, just over 12 minutes left to play as they feed this one inside. Good turnaround once again. So, Simi, uh, six early points for the Panthers. And, and he and Justin Thomas, Jalen Thomas, really worked together well in that high-low post game. Saw a lot of that against Georgia Tech earlier this year uh, when they beat the, the ACC rival from Atlanta. And uh, those two played a big part in that with that high-low post game. Parker with 10 on the shot clock, trying to back his way in. Lewis kicks it back out. It was deflected. Four on the shot clock. Deshaun Parker for three. And there's a foul on the floor as James Lewis was able to pull down the rebound. That's going to take us to another media timeout. 11 and a half left to play in the first half. 14-10, Georgia State on top. Your electric cooperative is different. We're local, not-for-profit, and owned by those we serve. Our mission is to provide power at the lowest possible cost with the highest standard of service. We're different in a good way. These lines, like the creases, in my father's hands, show the hard work and sacrifices of a line worker. These lines are the connections my father helped build between people, businesses, and organizations. They tell the story of how we invested in ourselves. We're public power, and these lines are our lines. Local businesses, families, and schools play a vital role in our community. So does your electric cooperative. We do more than keep the lights on. By investing in scholarships, grants, and other educational opportunities, we power and empower the people we serve. 14-10, Georgia State on top of the Appalachian State Mountaineers as you take a look at Dustin Kearns, also in his second season. Two second-year head coaches with these programs working the sidelines, and he had 18 wins last year in year one. What a great job his coaching staff does as well. Patrick Moynihan, Bob Zork, Frank Young, and Bradley Fay, and they all made the trip with Coach Kearns from Presbyterian. So these guys used to winning together. Georgia State showing a 2-3 zone on this out of bounds by the Mountaineers. Rising, connecting is Justin Forrest. Justin did a good job attacking the smaller Corey Allen. Got right past him, got to the elbow. Justin Roberts, the junior from Indianapolis. Colin Moore, freshman, number 24 in blue. He had 14 points against Coastal Carolina and Georgia State's win last Saturday. 
Eight on the shot clock. Moore dancing around the top. He'll launch for three. Colin Moore with five early points for the Panthers. And I tell you what, he played really well against Coastal Carolina last week. 14 points, 6 to 12 from the floor. And watching film, he's their best perimeter defender as a fresh and big, strong kid at 6'5". Over half of Colin Moore's field goal attempts in his freshman campaign have been behind the three-point line. And he converts there for the Panthers' first triple of the contest. Long rebound, tracked down by Allen. Pure shooter is Corey Allen. He'll kick this one away from Moore as he slices. This one's still in play. And James Lewis Jr. just going to pick it up in the corner. Good closeout by Justin Forrest on that corner three, forcing him to put it on the floor. Forrest lost control. This one was tapped out off the Panthers. And Rob Lanier immediately up off the bench. He thought Forrest just lost the handle out of bounds that time. He had a pretty good look at it. It was right in front of him. He might <laughs> be right. How many of those, John, when you were a head coach, did you have to sail and have to put on that poker face and, and act as if? <laughs> well, you, you got to try to get your edge. You got to work them. You know, sometimes when you know you're wrong, you got to let it go. But you're working to get that call in the fourth quarter or the second, late second half in the college game <laughs> is what he's doing. Forrest makes a pay instead with a three ball. And then a foul from behind as Roberts was shoved in the back. Adrian Delf going to check in for Deshaun Parker, who just picked up the foul. That's his first. Mountaineers with four team fouls here in the first half so far. And a good ball game inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Allen off a curl. App State doing an excellent job on Corey Allen so far in the first half as Kane Williams spins away from traffic and finishes. He's tough. And especially when they set and reset and sometimes three times set that high post uh, screen for him. And he's just so good at getting downhill and, and getting to where he wants to get in the lane with the basketball. Forrest barking orders from the top. Delf driving, dishing, nice and a big jam for James Lewis Jr. Great pass, nice set. Coach Kearns drew up a nice 1-4 set on that right there. Excellent execution. Allen looking for space. He can create his own shot. So shifty with the basketball in his hands. And attacking is Kane Williams, senior from Douglasville. He's been in this program for quite some time and has played quality minutes the last several years. Going back to the previous coaching staff, he was on that team that made the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. Here's the kick. Delph launches, corner pocket. You bet. That's a big shot. Big shot by Adrian Delph. Mountaineers getting some good minutes from. And Moore had it deflected as Ede saves it up ahead to Gregory. With the monster trying to flush it down. And this one was in and out. Got to get back. Got to get back. This is when Georgia State's dangerous. Donovan Gregory was ready to take off on that one. And now there's a tie up on the other end. Possession arrow is going to keep it with the Panthers. So a missed opportunity there for the Mountaineers, but the Panthers leading by one. 21-20, we're going to take a break. More Sunbelt basketball after these messages.
you know, they... I've got no problem with him trying to take it in on that guy and dunk it on him. I have no problem with that. No, whatsoever. no. I mean, he took. Off. I thought he. I thought he was. He was so far above the rim. I'm he like, was he's sizing, not going to miss it. He and was then sizing it, the guy up. He jumped too soon. He was. He was looking at the defender instead of looking at the rim. And like you said, he took off too soon. He got up, but oh, he was way up. Absolutely. I wonder if he comes back out. I mean, I wonder. Let's see if there's some consistency here. I know one guy that's looking for it. <laughs> I tell you, I'm surprised. I mean, they've done a great job on Corey Allen. Like I said, Corey Allen. 28 points in the victory last Saturday against South Alabama. Mountaineers split with the Jaguars last weekend. They're 4-2 and two in conference play. And, John, when you look at his stat line from last week, you – really kind of feel like Adrian Delph is the glue guy for this Mountaineers team right now that could really get them over the hump to create some separation at the top of the East Division. Well, when you've got a guy like Adrian Delph scoring 28 and you've got a guy like Justin Forrest that can go for 28 or 30 any, any night, you've got Michael Almonese, who's a threat to score from three. You've got a nice balance with your perimeter guys. And as you know, as an opposing coach, you've got to pick your poison. What guy are you going to try to take away, and and what guy are you going to try to let beat you? And Adrian was that guy that beat him last week. Williams in transition, threw it behind Allen, and the Panthers just going to hit the reset button. Give the Mountaineers some credit; they've been good in transition D tonight. Talk about how this Panthers unit likes to play up tempo and likes to get up and down. And my, I started to say a minute ago, Michael Eads is really giving the Mountaineers some good minutes, especially defensively. For a freshman to stay in front of an all-conference uh, potential player like um, Kane Williams, like he just did right there, keep his verticality and not foul him, that's impressive. Allen's open in the corner. And 0 for 3 to start the game is Corey Allen from behind the three-point line, but he can get it going fast for the Panthers. Well, we talked about it over the break uh, off the air, Kendall. Uh, Corey Allen did not shoot the ball well last year in the Holmes Convocation Center, so it, it could start to become mental for him if he doesn't see one going in, in the basket. Just under seven left to play in the first half. Georgia State, eight and two on the season, two and one in the Sun Belt Conference. Pivotal weekend for these two teams. Delph missed on the jump shot. And the outlet to Allen up ahead. He'll survey the floor. High post entry, shot fake from Tippin, and a nice step through as he draws the foul. Yeah, Mountaineers lost sight of the scouting report on top in there. He's left-handed, very athletic, always comes back to his left shoulder. So, got to keep that in mind. He's very effective around the basket, tremendously athletic. And uh, like I said, he transferred in from the University of Georgia this year. And he's been a nice addition to this Georgia State Panthers team. Top in 6'6 frame, redshirt sophomore. He's a lefty. Knocks down the first free throw. As you can see here, he's flashing from the side and comes through, and R.J. Duhart just went for the ball fake. If he would stayed on the ground, probably would have been able to block that shot at 6'9". So Toppin with his second free throw. Knocks them both down. Just came in off the bench. John mentioned 57% from the floor for that guy right now through the season. Just over six minutes to go, home scavocation center. And if I'm Dustin Kern sitting over there, I'm, I'm pretty happy right now with where this game's at. 25-20 at the six minute mark. This is the tempo that he, he wants to play, not necessarily what Georgia State wants to play. Johnson, speedy quick guard, drops it off that time for the easy deuce of Jalen Thomas. 
and that's what Jalen Thomas does. He just kind of hangs around the rim, and the guards penetrate, and they pitch it to him, and he shoots that little face-up jump hook that he's got. That's a 6-0 run for the Panthers over the last minute 53. Shot fake for Michael Eves. R.J. Duhart with eight on the shot clock. Mountaineers looking to create here. The kick out, Huntley has to launch. Long rebound of the Panthers. Somebody better stop Kane Williams. Thomas and Huntley battling for position inside. There's the drop off again. This one through the fingertips of Thomas. Yeah, Mal Michael Almonis, he came from behind and swatted away. Good help, help side defense. And Almonis going to back this one out. Eads catches and fires and hits. You mentioned it, John. Michael Eads providing great minutes for Dustin Kearns and the Mountaineers right now. And a big time three that couldn't have come at a better spot when things look to be leaking away from Appalachian State. Well, the game's slowing down for him as it does this time of year for most freshmen. And as you can see, he's, he's keeping his space and he's ready to shoot the ball before it gets there. And he uh, had some, uh, I believe he made two or three uh, threes in the second half against South Alabama last weekend. So he's starting to get comfortable. He's starting to live up to his reputation as a very good three-point shooter. Four-point game here inside of the Holmes Cavication Center. Which in Georgia State just solid. They have been at the top of this Sunbelt Conference for quite some time. And Rob Lanier keeping it that way. 19 wins last year. They were 19 and 13 and 12 and 8 in the conference. Of course, Appalachian State 18 wins in Coach Kearns and his staff's first year. These two teams have been in some battles over the years as well. And here they are yet again, fighting for, for position atop the Sun Belt East. Georgia State only one game last week against Coastal Carolina. The Friday game was canceled. So just one meeting with Coastal Carolina. Of course, they'll try to make that game up somewhere down the road. And drawing some contact is Johnson in the paint at the 418 mark of the first half. Mountaineers have really got uh, Georgia State frustrated in the half court. Their transition defense is, has been excellent. They haven't got a lot of run outs and, and you know when they get in transition they're looking for that corner three and they haven't had a lot of those either. So you gotta, you gotta tip your hat to the Mountaineers. They're playing great defense. Sasha Gluskov is back in for the Mountaineers. You got to watch out for a lob play here to top him. And instead, the Panthers just going to reset. Toppin, nice shot fake. Down the alley, he finishes with the left over Gluskov. And JoJo Toppin showing off the athleticism right there. I'm surprised he didn't dunk that ball. He was putting on a dunking exhibition in warm-ups. Six-point game, just under four left to go in the first half. Forrest from deep, Big and shot. he hits. Big shot. Mountaineers would love to get Justin Forrest going here with three minutes left in the half. Johnson falling away. Big rebound for Justin Forrest. He'll take it up the floor himself. Feeling it right now, rises. Corey Allen with the rebound who's scoreless here in the first half. It's a really good shooting team for Georgia State right now. With Roberts Johnson and Corey Allen. Mountaineers have got to extend out. Roberts looking for space, teardrop, and it rattles through. First bucket of the game for Justin Roberts, the junior. Michael Almonese takes it up the floor for the Mountaineers.
Almonese calls a play high above the arc. Six on the shot clock. Gluskov from three. Oh and he my sets goodness. his feet and hits. Oh my goodness, where's that come from? Wow, Sasha Gluskov with the deep three. Kick out, Johnson. And he missed everything on the three. 31-29. 208 left to go. We'll take a timeout here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Good ball game between Georgia State and App State. We'll be right back. At Ingalls, we're proud supporters of Mountaineer Athletics. Ingalls, everything you need for game day. Your electric cooperative is different. We're local, not-for-profit, and owned by those we serve. Our mission is to provide power at the lowest possible cost with the highest standard of service. We're different in a good way. These lines, like the creases in my father's hands, show the hard work and sacrifices of a line worker. These lines are the connections my father helped build between people, businesses, and organizations. They tell the story of how we invested in ourselves. We're public power. And these lines are our lines. Big three from Sasha Gluskov right before the timeout to pull the Mountaineers within two. And just 2.08 left to play in the first half. Dustin Kearns. Trying to get his crew to take the halftime lead over Georgia State. It's been a good one here in the first half. Back and forth. Every time the Panthers look like they may pull away here in the first half, the Mountaineers come storming right back. Well, one thing the Mountaineers have done, Kendall, is they haven't turned the ball over. They're getting good shots within the flow of their offense. They're taking the shot clock down. And uh, that's taken the tempo way down in this game and, and made it go in the Mountaineers' favor. And there it is. Delph gives the Mountaineers the 32-31 lead. How does the Panthers respond? Appalachian State starting to heat up from three-point land. I think he just lost that ball. And Mountaineer basketball. Georgia State definitely looking very frustrated out there, Kendall, and uh, I think it's a good idea by uh, Robin there to come with some pressure here. Try to pick up the tempo of this last two minutes, minute 30 of this half. Parker being hounded by Roberts in the backcourt. Gets it into the front court. Parker's got to be carefully pushing off of that off arm and smaller Roberts. Gregory muscling it up for two more. Donovan Gregory's been such an integral part this year for the Mountaineers. Just seems like Kendall, every time they need a bucket, he gets it for them. Roberts in the paint and a wide open scene. That's just a breakdown defensively from App State. Yeah, a couple Mountaineer defenders ran into each other. Just lack of communication. They played great defense this half. Every now and then you're gonna have breakdowns. Forty-two seconds. Luskov the shot fake. He'll give this one up to Parker. Lost control. Roberts out in front of everyone with the lead feed and the easy lay. And just like that, a quick four points as Georgia State turns the tables once again and retakes the lead. And a good timeout by Dustin Kearns. You don't want them to get a, a six, seven, eight point run here to, to end the half. Little uh, disorganized on the offensive end, so go ahead and 
Um, make a couple substitutions. Looks like he's putting Michael Almonte back into the game, which is a great move against the pressure. And just settle everybody down. Take this last shot of the half. Worst case scenario, you're going down one. Georgia State just one of six from the three-point line here in the first half. Coming into tonight's game from three, the Panthers right at 37% as a team. So they have really struggled and give Appalachian State credit defensively. And it was like this in the first year with Appalachian State and Dustin Kearns and his staff that the Mountaineers Arguably the best half-court defensive team in the conference. Well, I think they've proven it, Kendall. I mean, they've the, st the statistics back it up. And, you know, we sit here and we watch it game in and game out. They completely take, you know, the other team's either best offensive weapon away or they, they completely disrupt their half-court offense. And that's what we're seeing with Georgia State. They just, they're having a hard time getting anything out of their half-court offense. Shot clock is dead here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. There's seven seconds left on the game clock. Almonese sizing up Allen. He'll let it go. And he'll connect. Michael Almonese gives the Mountaineers a two-point lead at the break. Great job by Almonese recognizing that Georgia State coming out of that timeout had dropped into a 2-3 zone. And Justin Forrest just kind of rolled over in front of Corey Allen, which freed him up for that three-point shot. You'll see right here, actually Donovan Gregory kind of got in the way there, but uh, Almonese recognized the defense. That's a big shot. That's five at halftime here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Kevin Lewis and John Reister here with you tonight on ESPN Plus. And we'll take a look at the first half stats and numbers for you. The Mountaineers really got it going from three-point land there in the first half. Eight of 15 from the three-point line. That's one thing that would jump out at you as you take a look at the stats at Georgia State, on the other hand, just one of six. That's the difference of the ball game right now. Well, that's the difference, Kendall. We're making ours, and they're not making theirs. But you look at the cross the other way, 56% field goal percentage. That's because they've got 26 points in the paint. So they're making up for their lack of distance shooting by, by pounding it inside. They've got uh, a bunch of offensive rebounds and stick backs. But uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't come out and start making some threes. They've got some really good shooters on that team. You got to hand it to the Mountaineers. Their, their half-court defense has just been ridiculously stingy. I mean, it's just, you know, they're in every passing lane. Uh, it's like they know the Georgia, what Georgia State's going to do before they do it. Georgia State 56% from the field there in the first half as well. And they made all four of their free throws in the first half on a side note as well but nine turnovers from Georgia State. That's a little uncharacteristic for a Rob Lanier co coach team. He'll try to make those adjustments at the halftime. You can certainly believe that. Yeah, they're only averaging 12 turnovers a game, so nine at the half. He's not going to be happy with that. Uh, I'd be interested to see whether Georgia State comes back with some pressure. They, they gave App some problems with that, especially when Michael Almonese was not on the floor. So uh, they've got to find a way, if you're Georgia State, to pick up the tempo of this game, speed it up a little bit, get the Mountaineers to play a little bit faster because I'm telling you, Appalachian's just done an incredible job of getting this game down into the 30s. And when they play in the 50s and the 60s, nine times out of 10, they win. 37-35, the halftime score between these two teams. App State made their last four shots of the first half. We'll come back and show you some more between App State and Georgia State. The second half's on the way.
Wow, we've made eight threes in a row. Man, it's like we've talked about all year. They and with Michael Almonese knocking in a couple of those, one to end the first half that was huge to give the Mountaineers a two-point lead here at the break. But they were 8 of 15 from downtown in the first half. Yeah, that's 53%, Ken. And I tell you, when they're making their outside shots, they're tough. It opens things up for James Lewis Jr. Uh, there's an unexpected one right there. Uh, but uh, I tell you, it looked good shooting it, didn't he, Kendall? And uh, Adrian Delp, Mr. Reliable this year. And uh, I like how the Mountaineers have come out and, and selectively have shot their threes. They're not forcing the ball. Uh, I think Georgia State's done a good job of taking their, their interior game away. And uh, it's a nice adjustment by the Mountaineers to go ahead and, and start shooting the ball from distance. As you can see on the inside, Georgia State, 26 points in the paint. A lot of that was Kane Williams, as we're seeing right here. That, he's so good at getting in deep off the dribble. And um, you know they got two bigs that can score with uh, Thomas and Sosemi. So it's going to be an interesting second half, Ken. I'm, I'm looking forward to see how this is going to play out. Roberts at top and able to get to the rim on a couple of occasions there. And Georgia State, 56% from the field, even though they were one of six from downtown. So we'll see what they can do to get it going from behind the three-point line. This is one of the better shooting teams in the Sun Belt Conference, especially with Corey Allen, who's an absolute sniper for the Panthers. We'll see if he can get going. Just two first-half points for Georgia State. We've got more to come in the second half right after these messages on ESPN+. Plus. Hey, that was a big, he just comes out of ball modesty to end the first half. And the Mountaineers with the 37-35 lead right now. Let's take a look at what's at stake tonight and this weekend across the Sun Belt standings. You see these two teams sitting at the top. App State with four conference victories thus far. They've played more games than Georgia State, but this is a pivotal weekend because a sweep could create a little separation on this side, especially after Georgia State's three-point victory over Coastal Carolina last Saturday. Yeah, whoever wins this series this weekend here is gonna be sitting on top of the conference either way. You got Coastal playing Troy, so they could possibly sweep that series and end up at four and two. But uh, Georgia State wins two, obviously. You know, they're gonna be sitting at the top with one loss. App wins two. You know, they're gonna be sitting at the top with two losses and six wins. So, you know, e even if they split, both teams are still going to be hovering near the top, depending on what Coastal Carolina does. It's just, we've talked all year, Kendall, about how there's so much balance on the east side of the conference. And you look on the other side, you got the same thing going on. So this is just typical Sun Belt play. It happens every year. You've got talented teams, very, very equal in talent. And, you know, this is what it looks like. You, you know, but if you do have somebody that's fortunate enough to put together a run, like you said, you could get a little bit of separation at the top. Lots of things could get jumbled around in Texas State leading the Sun Belt West right now at three and one. Well, let's look at the games across the conference tonight. Troy and Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern and South Alabama. That rounds out the East Division of games. And then on the West, Arkansas State, Louisiana could be one to pay attention to. Little Rock and UTA, another one. Those two teams tied in the Sun Belt West right now. That could be a good series as well. Just a very balanced conference and a very balanced Sun Belt as we're used to seeing year in and year out on both sides. And again, you're gonna play teams on your side of the, the division four times this year. Will not play the opposite division until the conference tournament. That's gonna to make it very interesting as Forrest immediately hits the jumper. And he was out. Uh, way before game time today, working with uh, Coach Monahan on that very shot right there. Nice to see that hard work rewarded. Lobbing this one up for Thomas. It's deflected away right into the hands of Forrest again. Parker surveys. Delph will catch and shoot. 
Thomas is able to clear the board again for Georgia State. Into the paint, looking to drop it off. This one deflected right back into the hands of Roberts. Up strong one more time with Sosime, and he draws the contact. So Eliel Sosime will be at the free throw line for Georgia State. This is a Georgia State team that's really struggled at times rebounding the basketball this year, John. Yeah, they've struggled at the free throw line too. It's nice to see the ball go in for Eliel Sosime here. He's only a 57% free throw shooter, which is often as he gets to the line, he's got to find a way to get better. And um, here we're going to see a little more pressure from Georgia State. I'm not surprised by that. They, like I said, we, we talked about they've got to try to find a way to pick up the tempo of this game. Good pressure defense by Justin Roberts. He will really bother ball handlers on opposing teams. Roberts is a very good on-ball defender for Georgia State. James Lewis Jr. backing his way in that time on Sosime, and he draws the foul. I like the idea of going inside, is trying to establish James Lewis Jr. The post game for the Mountaineers was pretty quiet in the first half, and trying to get them going is going to open up. I'm sure, you know, Coach Lanier talked at halftime of, about getting out and covering the Mountaineer shooters, so great idea by Coach Kearns to try to get the ball inside and establish James Lewis Jr. This one just falls off the rim for James Lewis Jr. Again, Sosame with the foul. One team foul for both of these squads to start the second half, just a minute and a half in. And James Lewis Jr. goes one of two that time at the free throw line. Three point game. Allen off balance. Score the basket. That's a three. I don't know what's going on here. I think they may have called a moving screen. Well, they're going to count the three, and then I think there's a flop warning to follow. Okay. So now we're tied at 40, and that's all Corey Allen needed to get going. And one thing worth noting is Corey Allen comes out of the locker room, picks up a ball, Right before we started the second half, hits one three and goes over and gets ready to start the second half. And there he is knocking down his first attempt from three-point land as Justin Forrest is able to answer the bell with two on the other end. Sometimes, though, for a shooter like Allen, all you need to see is see it go through the basket one time, right? Well, and that's what he did. You know, shooters like to see that ball go in. And, and uh, you know, if that's what it takes to get him going, then um, – you know, he knows himself better than anybody else, but you're right, he made one three and then he went and sat down. Adrian Delph fighting for the loose ball, and Gregory able to pick it up and go up strong. Donovan Gregory has a knack for picking up the loose ball and the hustle plays, but that time is able to take it up all in one motion, and he ended up drawing a foul as you get a second look. Well, you'll see here, Adrian Delph did a good job of keeping the ball alive and then just keeping it moving Donovan Gregory in the right place at the right time, as he always is. He's just always around the basketball. Flames the first one off the heel of the rim. Donovan Gregory just two starts last year. One of the more improved players in the Sun Belt Conference this year. And he's been the Mountaineers MVP, scoring, rebounding, passing the ball, defending. Uh, he's doing it all, and he made a huge jump from last year. And, and last year wasn't fair to him. He was kind of beat up injury-wise most of the season, and he's completely healthy this year, and you're seeing the results of, of working hard over the summer and being healthy. Gregory goes one of two. Yeah, he's an absolute winner. Donovan Gregory, back-to-back -back state championships at Carmel Christian in Charlotte. Allen off a screen. And whistles come in. That's going to go against Corey Allen. Now they're saying he kicked Adrian Delph. I'd like to see that. That's that's an interesting call. I know a lot of shooters like to throw that foot out, a la James Harden, and create contact. 
That looked a little incidental. Looked like he just came down on Adrian's foot. That's Corey Allen's second. Team foul number three. Remember, he just got a flop warning after the May triple for Georgia State just a moment ago. And there's a te you take a look at the flop rule in college basketball. So you get one warning, and then it's a Class B technical foul. Forrest looking to create space. This one take it away. In transition comes Williams. And a collision with Donovan Gregory. He'll pick up a foul. Yeah, he got there a little late. Might have been a slick sl spot on the floor. They both went kind of down awkwardly there. Good active hands by Toppin to knock that loose. Fortunate nobody got hurt on that one. Like I said, they, they looked like they both hit a slick spot on the floor. So Kane Williams approaching 1,100 points for his career is at the free throw line now. Misses the first free throw. In fact, Kane Williams with 1,087 points in his career, he needs just 13 points to reach the 1,100 point milestone in his career. He's been a good one for Georgia State over the last several years throughout his career in Atlanta. And a big size guard, 6'4", 195 pounds as well. He's a very good slasher at the rim. He's really quick, deceptively quick. With and the there basketball. he is on D, taking it away, tossing it back, and finishing that time was Colin Moore, the freshman. And here they're ramping up the pressure. It's the first time they've really come after the Mountaineers in the full court pressure. Allen's got to be careful. He's playing with two fouls. Tied at 43 all. Pivotal game in the Sun Belt standings tonight. Six on the shot clock. Forrest, the lob to Gregory. And that was blocked away. Gluskov picked it back up, and then Gregory hit the turnaround, Jay. And now the officials. They might be talking about whether the ball hit the, the rim or not, because they did reset the shot clock to 20. Shot clock reset to 20. You're, you're right, on the John. the lob to Delft. I'm, I'm sorry, not to Delft, to Donovan Gregory. And I don't know if the ball hit the rim or not. I, think I don't know if it did either. At. In fact, it, it kind of looked like it hit the side of the backboard. I think originally they thought that it did because the shot clock, it did it, hit the it rim. It did hit the rim, okay. So that's the correct call, and that, that basket's going to count for Donovan Gregory. But When I like a pe the piece of officiating that they let the play go ahead and, and finish before they just blew the whistle. And um, if, if they would immediately blew the whistles, you know, when there was the, you know, the confusion, then the Mountaineers wouldn't have had a chance to stick that offensive rebound back in. So that's a, that's a good piece of officiating. Our officiating crew doing an excellent job. And we, were talking, we were talking at halftime, Kendall, about we didn't even notice the officials. They only called six total team fouls the entire first half. And uh, when you're not talking about the officials, they're doing an excellent job. Mike Nance, Keith Patterson, and Doug Sermons, our officiating crew tonight. Good veteran crew here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And they really let them play in the first, first half. No question about it. And they're going to have to fix this game clock. Right now they have 162 on the game clock here think, inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. I don't think anybody's seen it yet center. either. <laughs> the officials now haven't noticed it. it. Now, now they got it. And there it goes, 16-22. Just, just needed to add an extra two there on the <laughs> clock, right? I'm glad you saw that. I didn't see it initially, Kim. <laughs> I don't think, the, obviously the officials didn't either.
That's a good freeze up top on Caden Williams. Most teams are not athletic enough to keep him from taking the ball around that uh, screen. So actually the bucket for Donovan Gregory did not count. So now it's 45-43 after the Delft bucket there. And another turnover as Forrest picks it off and lays it in on the other end. Well, going back to the controversy that we had at the table just a moment ago. I don't know why they didn't count the They basket. ruled it a shot clock violation. And they thought that Justin's shot was a pass instead of a shot. And I hate that rule. The ball hits the rim. It's got to reset the clock. You can't, you know, tell me that, you know, the officials are out there deciding whether it's a pass or a shot. I just don't like that. I don't like that call at all. So it's 47-43, media timeout with 15-24. And Appalachian State gaining some momentum. They've made their last three shots. We'll come right back. We'll see if they can extend it out, or does Georgia State, can they make another run? Your electric cooperative is different. We're local, not-for-profit, and owned by those we serve. Our mission is to provide power at the lowest possible cost with the highest standard of service. We're different in a good way. These lines, like the creases in my father's hands, show the hard work and sacrifices of a line worker. These lines, are the connections my father helped build between people, businesses, and organizations. They tell the story of how we invested in ourselves. We're public power, and these lines are our lines. Local businesses, families, and schools play a vital role in our community. So does your electric cooperative. We do more than keep the lights on. By investing in scholarships, grants, and other educational opportunities, we power and empower the people we serve. Proud supporters of Mountaineer Athletics. Ingles, everything you need for game day. Forty-seven forty-three is the score. So they waved off the made basket from Donovan Gregory, and they actually said this happened just a moment ago. It was a, was when the officials went over to the table to take a second look. They ruled Justin Forrest's lob a pass even though it hit the rim, and then they say that Gregory didn't get it off in time, so it was ruled a shot clock violation. That's why the bucket didn't count. But then it kind of all worked out for Appalachian State because they scored four straight. Seven forty-four. Deshaun Parker back in the game for Dustin Kearns of the Mountaineers. James Lewis, Jr. And the Mountaineers, a stingy bunch, as they have been all year. 
elevating on the J was Roberts. He was bothered. And then, excuse me, Colin Moore was able to take it away on the lead feet ahead. Good take from Kane Williams. 6'4", 195 pound frame, but he's got an explosive first step as you saw on display right there. Long three for Michael Almonese. Just missed short. Donovan Gregory fighting for the loose ball. And jump ball is going to be the call. It's going to stay with the Panthers. So C.J. Huntley and Adrian Delft check in. Donovan Gregory is going to have a seat. He's been all over the floor for the Mountaineers tonight. Finger roll good for Colin Moore again. And Colin Moore, a guy that, as I mentioned earlier, has over half his, his attempts have been from behind the three-point line this year, has really done a nice job of creating at the rim tonight for Georgia State. Parker trying to find someone. He finds Almonese. Shot clock in single digits. Almonese, the step back. Couldn't knock it down. And Huntley runs it down. Still short to shot clock violation. A good D by the Panthers that time. Here's Justin Roberts, speedy quick guard for Georgia State with the rock in his hands. Roberts leads the team in assists, a really good passer for this Georgia State team. Allen drops it off, floater too strong, and stuck back in by Sosime. Delf, good pass inside to James Lewis Jr. and he draws the foul. Little pick and roll action that time for the Mountaineers and it paid off. So James Lewis Jr. right back at the free throw line. His Second trip tonight. Put on about 15 to 20 pounds in the offseason. You can really tell it in his upper body from last year to this year. And he's one of the, the most improved players in the Sun Belt Conference. There's no question. Might be the most improved player. We are tied at 50. Just over 12 minutes to go. First half here inside of the Home Scout Vacation Center. Corey Allen had the pass intercepted by Forrest. Good anticipation for Forrest. 
coast to coast, he draws the contact. 11.55 left to go in the ball game. We are tied here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. We'll be right back. We've got a good one shaping up here in Boone. A couple of students just happy to be here, huh? Center, the 13th all-time meeting between Georgia State and Appalachian State. And you can see it's been a good one. Georgia State with that 7-5 to five lead right now. And they've won four straight games in the series. We mentioned these two teams. They've had some battles, some closely contested games in the last couple of years. Georgia State winning the Sun Belt and claiming the league's automatic berth two years ago before losing to Houston in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And that was when Ron Hunter was here, of course, last year, really had their sights set on another Sunbelt Tournament championship, but Sunbelt Tournament was canceled early due to COVID. Toppin lost control, and then it was last touched by Adrian Delf. Thomas just missed the bunny. App State by two. Parker attacking, and he takes it strong and gets it to go off glass. Dangerous pass. Allen thought about the pull up Jay. Instead, he dishes it back out. And Georgia State just looks bothered by the Mountaineers here in their half court offense. Corey Allen with that three. He doesn't need a lot of space. He's got eight points on the ball game. Six of those have come in the second half. So James Lewis Jr. going to check back in for the Mountaineers. Forrest had it tied up in midair. The jump ball was a call. And 
And deflected out again. There's six seconds on the shot clock after that one was deflected out of bounds. So now it will reset. Well, you almost hate a deflection in that particular instance, John, because they may could have held the Mountaineers, but instead it's Donovan Gregory who sticks it in for two. Top and rolls. And an offensive foul is called. Full court pressure coming from Georgia State. Inbound to Parker. Georgia State, a predominantly man-to-man -man team defensively. Of course, they've shown some 2-3 zone this year. And then, of course, the full court pressure, the run and jump that we've seen from Rob Lanier's crew. Moore drops it off for Thomas. He's wide open in the paint for two more. Gregory gets into the paint, bucket and the foul. So a chance to complete a three-point play the old-fashioned way for Donovan Gregory. Just always in the right place at the right time. So Gregory at the free throw line. We mentioned just two starts last year and he, as he cashes in. And Dusty Kearns has got to be excited with the way that his group is playing right now. Lots of energy here in the second half in the opening 11 and change. Cutting, so Sime finishes it plus the foul. So Elio Sosime, top 10 in the NCAA in offensive rebounds and in field goal percentage. This guy coming into the night was 66% from the field and he was averaging just under four and a half offensive boards a game. On a Georgia State team that John, you and I had talked about earlier, has struggled at times to rebound the basketball this year. Good pass from Omanese. 14 on the shot clock. Forrest going to regather himself. He'll spin down the alley and change hands. Acrobatic finish for Justin Forrest. Williams slicing downhill. He'll kick it out. Hesitating was Colin Moore. And a blocking foul is called on Justin Forrest. Well, that's just the 16th foul. Justin Forrest kissing it off the window and giving the Mountaineers a three-point lead.
Those guys up there trying it. Oh, so four o'clock tip for the second of two meetings this weekend against Appalachian State. And then they return back home, South Alabama and Appalachian State again in two weeks. That's a quick turnaround to play the same team four times. You're really going to get to know the teams on your side of the, of the division if you didn't already. We're not already familiar with these teams. And Donovan Gregory, active hands on D to tip it out of bounds. Allen off a screen, right back to Roberts. Trying to back his way in. Panthers will reset with seven. Allen double team, gets rid of it to Thomas. Free throw line, Jay. And saved, but along the baseline, they say the Panthers stepped out of bounds. It will go back to the Mountaineers, and Dustin Kearns has got to be happy with the defense of his group coming out of the timeout. And Gregory got tangled up with Allen there. Seven and a half to go. And Forrest loses control. And this will go back to Georgia State. Johnson drops it off to Thomas, and he gets it to go that time with the right hand. Gregory into the paint, and an offensive foul is called. Stepping up with Sosime. That's a big play for Georgia State and a big opportunity with six and a half minutes to go. How about the high-low action from the Panthers to retake the lead? Modesty finds Forrest, good shot fake. Couldn't get the teardrop to go, but Donovan Gregory, who else, tracks it down in the corner. Parker with 10 on the shot clock. Extra pass, Forrest had it poked away. Active hands that time from Moore, and he finds Johnson up ahead. Follow good for Allen. How about the hustle play from Corey Allen that time? And a whistle and a foul is called on Colin Moore. 
and the bench creating all types of energy for this Georgia State team. Sixty-four, sixty-one. We'll be right back. Appalachian State, you see they're going to hit the road the next two weekends at Troy and at Georgia State. It's a quick turnaround as we talked about it to have to play a team four times. These two teams right now at the top of the Sun Belt East. But there was a foul right before the timeout on Colin Moore. And that's team foul number eight against the Panthers. So Justin Forrest is going to be at the line to shoot the one and one for the Mountaineers. Justin Farr is the top 15 scorer in program history here at Appalachian State. He has over 1,500 career points, and this one tapped right back out to him. And how about Forrest with the bucket and the foul? We mentioned it, that's been the Achilles heel for Rob Lanier's crew at certain times is the struggles to rebound the basketball. And right now, the Mountaineers trying to make the Panthers pay, and they do. So what once was a 64-61 game is now 65-64 Mountaineers. Off the mark of the three was Evan Johnson. Forrest, quick release, and a tie-up between James Lewis Jr. and Elio Sosime. So the arrow is going to go back to Georgia State. Anybody's ball game right now, back and forth the entire way tonight. These two teams know what's at stake. Appalachian State at four and two in the conference, and Georgia State two and one in Sunbelt play right now. Colin Moore just missed off glass. The 
as Delft comes and gets it after Omanasi picked up the dribble. And then losing the handle was Adrian Delft. Lead feet ahead and streaking to the bucket is Colin Moore. Appalachian State with 15 turnovers tonight. And John, we've seen several of those just kind of careless turnovers where they lose the handle. One point game here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. 67-66. Adrian Dell for the Mountaineers looking for their fifth Sun Belt victory of the season. Somehow Georgia State's out rebounded at 28-20. I'm a little surprised at that. Kearns working hard on the sideline for Appalachian State. Got his Mountaineers at 10 and 5 on the season. This game here, multiple lead changes throughout the second half. Several ties. These two teams back and forth in the 13th all-time meeting between Georgia State and Appalachian State. It's Panthers basketball. Colin Moore, the freshman from North Little Rock, Arkansas, with the basketball right now. Allen, the Euro step, he'll change hands. And a little mad at himself in frustration, he claps after he knew the opportunity that he had at the rim that time. They'll bounce this one inside to James Lewis, Jr. Trying to body up with Sosime. Delph has to launch in and out on the three. Allen swatted away by Parker. Good block by Deshaun Parker. Timeout on the court, called by Georgia State. And Georgia State wants a timeout with 2.41. So, John, what do you draw up if you're the Panthers on this inbound play?
So Panthers with the inbound with 2.41 left to play. Allen jabs and steps back. Long rebound for the Mountaineers. And he hits a lot of those tough shots. If you watch him on film, He has a knack for that, for hitting the fall away three. Almonese steps into one and splashes it down. Under two minutes to go, four point Mountaineers lead. Elevating, missing the jump shot, and James Lewis Jr. tracking down the loose board as Michael Almonese will bring it up the floor. Almonese pressured. Delph going to kick it right back out to Gregory. Forrest. Dishes it out, Delph with three on the shot clock. Knocks it down. Quick three in transition is good for Kane Williams. And it was much needed with one minute left to go as Georgia State calls another timeout. Ice cold three from Adrian Delph. Still anybody's ball game, 73-69. If you're the Mountaineers, you've got to take care of the basketball. Pressure on the inbound as Georgia State's going to immediately foul. 59 seconds left. This is going to be a chess match down the stretch between these two teams. And Appalachian State 11 of 16 at the free throw line tonight. They've been a pretty good free throw shooting team this year. Coming in at 77% as a team. Donovan Gregory is going to go to the line. He's a 70% free throw shooter. As Jimmy Valvano used to say, foul and foul early, right? And Roberts streaking to the bucket to finish. Four-point game, 75-71. And that's the one they were going to want to foul was James Lewis Jr. And good pressure D. That time, especially on Michael Almonese and Adrian Delph, not letting them get the basketball. But James Lewis Jr., a good free throw shooter as well. 
situation. I was going to say, there's really not a great guy to foul on the Mountaineers team because they came in to tonight's shooting right at 77% as a team. That's really getting it done from the free throw line this year. And you can't expect to go 21 for 22 from the line like they did against South Alabama on Saturday every night. They're right about where they need to be tonight. They're right around 70%. 75%. One of two as James Lewis Jr. makes the second. And that's the big one. That stretches the lead out to five. 76-71 and a timeout on the floor. And there's still an eternity left to play in this ball game at 53 seconds. And as we mentioned, it's a chess match down the stretch. Can App State take care of the ball and can they make their free throws? And I wouldn't be surprised for Coach Kearns to maybe throw a little token pressure out a 1-2-2 or a 2-2-1 just to slow Georgia State down a little bit, use a little bit more time, and then drop back into their man-to-man. -man. Uh, the last time uh, Georgia State had the ball, they, they didn't face a lot of resistance. Basically, Roberts just dribbled right through the middle of the defense and got to the rim. Didn't take much time off the clock. Doesn't look like the Mountaineers are going to pressure, but they're, they're going to have to be a little bit tighter on the defensive end than not let them get to the rim quite so easy. And Georgia State's really struggled from the three-point line, just four of 11. They only hit one three in the first half. Right now it's Justin Roberts and Corey Allen. They're the two that, that are the biggest threat from three-point distance. And out of bounds, this is gonna go back to the Mountaineers. Not a good shot by Kane Williams in that situation. He thought he got fouled, but he was the one that initiated the contact. Good no call by the officials. Omanese trapped, and he's fouled. Very close to a walk by Michael Omanese. But it was a good call by the official. He didn't get pushed from behind. So Michael Almonese, the grad transfer from Southern New Hampshire, is at the free throw line. He's an 82% free throw shooter. He's been automatic for Dustin Kearns' group this year. Well, it's like you used to tell my players, like, look, you know, this is going to be a free. We, this is going to be a free throw contest. Basically, we make our free throws. We're going to win this game unless we do something, you know, really uh, something we shouldn't do on the defensive end. So. Thomas bumps, and then Roberts lost it out of bounds. Still a lot of time left. Two possession game. And Georgia State's really going to ramp up their pressure. Forrest gets it into Almonese. And Roberts <laughs> fouls Michael Almonese with 31 seconds left. That's just Roberts' first. And Michael Almonese will go back to the free throw line. Just went one of two. And he knocks down the first. And that's a big one. That makes it a three possession game. Looked really, really cool and smooth on that shot. Makes them both, 79-71. Georgia State's got to score, and they got to score fast. Trying to salvage as much time as possible. And short on the three, and then Almonese's fouled again with 23.9 seconds left. And John, if, if he can make both of these and make this a double-digit game, you got to think that things are looking in the Mountaineers' favor right now. Yeah, it, it is, and it, like I said, you make your free throws at the end of the game, you're gonna win most games. There's still some outside crazy things that could happen, foul three-point shooters, some four-point plays, but I can't see a Dustin Kearns team making those kind of mistakes down the line. They very rarely do the Mountaineers beat themselves, and I, I don't see them beating themselves tonight. Eighty to seventy-one. Panthers just letting it roll as long as they possibly can. Allen picks it up. He's going to launch from three. 
And off the mark. That's gonna about do it. And that's gonna do it. Georgia State is not gonna foul. And Michael O'Monesey looks as if he'll just dribble this one out. 80 to 71, the final score and a big win for Dustin Kearns' group in the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Hard fought win by the Mountaineers. And Kendall, if you'd have told me that they would have scored 80 points tonight and won, I'd have been shocked. But I tell you what, they, they scored, they, they played a great ball game. They didn't turn the ball over a lot. And you know, Georgia State just didn't make the, the shots that they normally make. But that had a lot to do with a very stingy, very tough Mountaineers defense. 80 to 71, once again, the final score and 23 points from Justin Forrest tonight. Donovan Gregory pitches in 12, Adrian Delph with 17 as well. That's two monster games in a row for Adrian Delph with 28 last Saturday in the victory over South Alabama. So the Mountaineers five and two in Sunbelt play. And these two teams will do it again tomorrow at four o'clock right here inside of the Home Vacation Center. Once again, final score 80 to 71. This has been a presentation of ESPN. To view this game in its entirety or other games streaming on the ESPN family of networks, be sure to visit the ESPN app or ESPN.com. For Kendall Lewis alongside my partner, John Reister, we say so long from the high country.